got something really wrong in the right front of the car. It's not handling well. We noticed him out on the track. It's not moving well at all. He, when he came into the pits the last time, he was just, the disgust on his face was there. Uh, he was very, very upset. He's probably just going out there now and just running for points because he knows he's not a factor. Again, Harry Gant is standing by to take over the ride if need be, but a tremendously disappointing day so far for car number 11, Jack Ingram. Well, as disappointing as it's been for Jack, it's uh, been just the other way for Dale Earnhardt. I tell you, Ingram going a lot of laps down now with his unscheduled pit stops. He was 85 points behind Larry Pearson coming into this race, and he's going to drop down even more, may even drop out of contention for that championship here. There you see the second-place car. That is L.D. Ottinger, car number two, a two-time Grand National champion, a Grand National regular. Coming up there on the inside, that is Jeff Bodine. He is being posted as a lap down, but Bodine is really moving, trying to catch Dale Earnhardt and somehow get that lap back. But, you know, I think with the way that Earnhardt's running today, anybody a lap down right now is going to have a tough time being able to get it back. I don't foresee anyone having a break or having a shot at Earnhardt right now as strong as he's running. However, that car that we're looking at there, the Jeff Bodine car, was so dominant here back in May with Tim Richmond aboard. The car won both May races but this year and last year, and this is the car that Jeff Bodine ran second in in this race last year to Terry Labonte. So the car is capable of running awfully well. It's a Robert G. prepared car. It has a V8 engine in it, so it gets pretty good gas mileage, a small carburetor, and maybe Jeff Bodine, who is a super race car driver, can climb back toward the front and maybe make a run at his old nemesis, Dale Earnhardt. Well, the problems that Rick Hendrick alluded to a few moments ago apparently are solved on that car, but Rick said they may be having some ignition problems or something, but it doesn't appear that there's anything wrong with that car right now. Jeff Bodine is flying, but nobody has been able to run even close to car number eight, Dale Earnhardt. And what is it that makes a car like Dale's come on a track today when everybody has virtually the same type of pieces, same type of equipment, be as dominant as Dale's is today? You really don't know. You know, the Earnhardt car is strong. It's dialed in. He has Kirk Shelburne down there, the crew chief on his Winston Cup car, and they have had an awfully good season as they lead the Winston Cup points now going down the stretch, trying to hold off the likes of Tim Richmond and Darrell Waltrip. And that'll be tough to do, but Earnhardt has run awfully well in the Bush Grand National Competition. Wins at Daytona, Rockingham, as well as Darlington and Richmond. He's uh, only entered 10 races as I said before, and he's won four times. So he's been very competitive, and he has that new Chevrolet V6, and it's awfully strong. You know, the one question mark, Mike, about the V6 was the reliability factor. Would it live for 300 miles at over 160 miles an hour? Can it hold up? Well, we're going to find out today because Earnhardt certainly isn't babying that engine. He is pushing it full bore here all afternoon. Earnhardt's lead now over the rest of the field, 12.26 seconds. More racing here in Charlotte after these words from your local station. Darrell Walters back on the lead lap. Bobby Allison, Larry Pearson, and Tommy Houston are a lap down. 54 laps remain in this 300-mile race. Trouble over in turn two. One car taps the wall. Comes That's Rodney Howard's car number oh, 24. Flames from beneath the car. That's the Ford Thunderbird. That's Flame, and Howard throws the net out. Is trying to climb out of the car. He appears to be... Awake and alert as, as you see the gas tank is on fire and Howard is trying to get out of the car as quickly as he possibly can. And he's out of the car, runs away. The safety crews are on the scene immediately. And they will begin spraying and Howard now sitting down in disgust. Fortunately, he was able to get out of the car, but apparently tapping that wall, the fuel cell took a pretty good lick over there and a lot of flames beneath the car. Well, Rodney Howard, let's hope he's okay. As you see him sitting down on the grass, you know it had to have really smarted when you hit the wall. Plus. As you can see, it got quite warm inside that car. Rodney Howard, who is laying down now as, as his car has brushed the wall, that brings out caution. It will be a break for Darrell Waltrip, as we have said. Howard out of Greenville, South Carolina, and the Thaxton Racing Ford, and you see it there still on, on fire. Let's see what happened to the Rodney Howard car. The 22-year-old young driver who formerly ran Charlotte Daytona Dash. His, his car is already up across the racetrack into the wall as a couple of other cars involved. The car number 90 of Haskell Willingham gets, gets in contact with another couple of cars spinning. Here is Howard's car on fire coming down across the racetrack as Brett Hearn's car slides by. And again, it will come into contact with the inside guardrail. It will pop the guardrail, come back out to a halt, 
and the young driver will try to unbuckle and get out as he has done, and now safety crews are there to extinguish the flames. Boy, there were some serious flames coming out of the bottom of that car. That was a scary sight out there, and there is now smoke pouring out of that race car uh, just at the exit of turn two out on the far side of the racetrack, and I believe that that is going to put Daryl Walter Bond the same lap now as Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt just coming out of the pits there, both he and Waltrip, in fact, everyone in the pits as he slides by, and there was uh, Larry Pearson's car number 21 down the pit road, but there is Earnhardt moving back on the track, and we will check with timing and check with scoring and see what the status is on, on the Waltrip and Earnhardt battle, and there's the aftermath of the Red Thaxton Ford Thunderbird. That was a former Bud Moore car, a car that Bud Moore ran on the Winston Cup competition back in the late 70s, 1980, uh, rather Ford Thunderbird for Bud Moore, and that car will be pretty well pulled out the pasture. Well, we understand that is that was a break, that caution, if you can call that a break, but uh, certainly 22-year-old uh, Rodney Howard, we will be checking on his condition, but Darrell Walter, Larry Pearson, and Bobby Allison had not pitted. They are all three back on the lead lap, so, well, if uh, anything has happened to slow Earnhardt down, we may have a race again as we now have four cars back on the lead, ha lead lap. Earnhardt had lapped the field. We are under caution now. And Earnhardt is still the leader, but Walter Pearson and Allison are back on the lead lap. Well, there's Larry Pearson now back in the pits in the Chattanooga Chew car. That's a Chevrolet Nova as they are just topping the tank off. They shouldn't worry about fuel. They went 80 laps early in the race on a tank of fuel, so they came in and topped it off. A couple other cars in the pits, uh, Billy Standridge, as you see now, the safety crew is removing uh, Rodney Howard. There were two or three other cars involved as they went spinning uh, over out of turn two. And we mentioned Haskell Willingham's car number 90 was one of the cars involved as he was involved in the lower part of the racetrack. But Rodney Howard, the most seriously involved as far as tapping the wall, he really, he didn't tap it. He, he really hit it a ton, as they say, over out of turn two and the car flames beneath the car. And it speaks well for the fact that the car was constructed, the roll cage to protect the driver, the seat, safety harness, the window netting, everything there for the driver's safety. But you see the front of that Ford Thunderbird shoved back some six, maybe eight feet toward the firewall, and now safety crews have taken the driver, who, and we saw climb out of the car and jump over the wall, and hopefully he'll be taken in for a routine check. All right, we certainly hope the best for Rodney Howard, as again, there is caution on the speedway, 147, 200 laps complete. Earnhardt's the leader. We'll be back with more of the racing in Charlotte in a moment. Daryl Walter, Larry Pearson are all on the lead lap. Bobby Allison and Eldie Ottinger are a lap down at the moment. Still looks like part of a race race. Well, there are now nine laps to go here in this race. Earnhardt is the leader as he has been most of the day. Let's go down now to Pit Road and Glen Jarrett. With, on, with only nine laps left, it looks like you guys have pretty well got things in the bag. Uh, count the laps down now. Yeah. Has it been as easy as it looked? Really, it has for us. Dale's been doing all the work. We have changed a few tires. Pretty easy day from the crew standpoint, then. Yeah. Be nice if every day at the racetrack was like this for a crew chief, huh? Yeah, I'd like for tomorrow to go like this. Has Dale had any problems of any sort all day? Well, he's been a lot of debris on the, tra on the track. Uh, You've got to kind of watch out for that and change his line a little bit. But that's not too big of a problem. Other than changing your groove, that's the only problem Dale Earnhardt has had all day. It's been pretty much his day from start to finish here, and it looks like, barring any unforeseen disasters in the next eight laps, that Dale Earnhardt will win his second race in a row at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, we will count him down seven laps to go, and uh, Kirk Shelverdeen, he kind of has that sly look on his face again, and uh, uh, he's a fun interview. I like the guy. I think he ought to start his own TV show. It's hard to get him to be quiet, and, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a man of few words. we got a pretty good battle heating up. The one you see on the racetrack there is Brett Footine in the Dayglow Orange car, then comes Davey Allison, then Mike Alexander, and they're battling Mike back for seventh, eighth, and ninth spot. And it's Brett Bodine who owns that seventh position now on the racetrack, oh. and in eighth, it's Davey Allison. Ninth is car number 84, Mike Alexander. And there are now six laps remaining. Six laps to go. 194 are complete. We'll run 200 here as Brett Bodine, Davey Allison, and Mike Alexander all plotting their strategy. They know they're not going to win, 
but they all want to right, fight for position on the racetrack and finish as high as they can. They're all strong competitors. Well, you know, it's not that important for Davey Allison and Mike Alexander. Sure, finishing seventh may help them. They get a few extra uh, dollars. It's a few thousand more dollars, but it's very, very important for Brett Bodine, the young driver who's in that point battle. He needs to finish as far up as he can. He knows that Larry Pearson is currently running in third spot, and barring any unforeseen problems, will finish in third. He needs to hang on to seventh right now. The young 25-year-old Davey Allison is making a move. Well, they come on the back straightaway, and Allison pulls up right beside him. And now Allison down low on the racetrack as they go into turn three. It's Bodine, who is up high, running the high line, and is trying to fight him off. But it looks like Allison, with some help and a little push down low from Mike Alexander, might be able to take him. But Brett Bodine shows a lot of fight and a lot of strength. And now as they enter into turn one, it's going to be Davey Allison. Now Brett Bodine comes back as they come through turn two, and they will fight side by side. That's really a good battle there, Jerry. That could be a preview of what you're going to see next year on the Champion Spark Plug Rookie of the Year battle from the Winston Cup Tour. Davey Allison already has a ride in the Harry Rainier car, and we understand that Brett Bodine may be offered the Hall Sale ride that Sterling Marlin just vacated last week. So these two youngsters may be battling it out for rookie honors next year, but to now, they're battling for... Oh, they and they come close and just touch coming out of turn four. Allison and Bodine get together. They are really fighting it tooth and nail. Four laps to go here in this race. Dale Earnhardt has the field covered, but you would think that those two cars are battling for the lead, and it seems as though Davey just kind of backed out a little bit and let him go by. Brett uh, Bodine now with a couple car lengths lead. Well, I'm sure Davey his tires getting heated up a little bit and Davey waving. You saw him in the windshield and signaling back to Mike Alexander. Mike actually backed off and allowed Davey to get back up in the groove. That's good sportsmanship there as both Alexander and Allison now losing some ground to Brett Bodine. The laps are winding down. They got to take a shot. They only got a couple laps to go. Three laps to go. There are three laps remaining. We're on lap 197. We run 300 miles in this race here in Charlotte, this Bush Grand National event, and Dale Earnhardt has had the field covered from the word go. He won the pole and hasn't looked back since. There are now two laps remaining as Dale Earnhardt takes his machine into turn two, and he will come down the back straightaway. Next time by, Dale Earnhardt will get the white flag as you see Brett Bodine, who is still holding off Davey Allison. And here, towards the end of the race, it looks like a blown engine for Tommy Houston. There is smoke coming out of Houston's car, and they are waving him down low. I have not seen a caution flag come out, and there does not appear to be a caution flag that will come out, but there is heavy smoke coming out from Tommy Houston's car. The white flag is out. Here's the final lap for Dale Earnhardt. As you see, the trail of smoke left by Tommy Houston, so I'm sure Earnhardt will take it easy as he heads in turn two and comes down the back straightaway. Earnhardt going for the win here at Charlotte. This is his home racetrack. He's on the back straightaway. Again, he is a, at least a 10-second lead over the second-place car of Darrell Waltrip. Heads it into turn three, and Tommy Houston will pull his car down and still try to take a checkered flag. Here comes Earnhardt out of turn four, and Earnhardt will just can kind of coast home to a victory as the checkered flag is out, and Dale Earnhardt has won the All-Pro Auto Parts 300 here at Charlotte. Daryl Waltrip will finish second. Larry Pearson will finish third. And it looks like Brett Bodine has got the best of Davey Allison as they head through turn four. Here they come. Allison comes down low, and Allison gets that car sideways. He's going to go spinning along the front straightaway. Allison trying to maintain control of that car. He does. And it's Brett Bodine finishing seventh. But boy, did the crowd finally get something to yell about here in this race today. And Davey Allison did one heck of a job to keep that car from coming. He spins the car back around, gets it fired. He must come down pit road and come by the start finish line, which will be extended across pit road. And now the checkered flag still waving for Davey Allison. What, what a heck of a job in driving he did to keep that car out of the pit wall. Well, we waited all day for the exciting moment of the race, and there it was as Brett Bodine beat, it, beat Davey Allison out for that seventh position. And there's your winner. There's the crew. What a job they have all done today. Dale Earnhardt, the winner here. He had the field covered all day long. He pulls that car into victory lane. Our pit reporters will be making their way over there in just a few moments. And Dale Earnhardt, the winner here in the All-Pro Auto Parts 300. Let's take a look at the unofficial results. There were only three cars on the lead lap at the end of the race. Earnhardt, of course, the winner. The Darrell Walter second. Larry 
Pearson, who was the top Bush Grand National driver. He finished third, and Bobby Allison fourth, Jeff Bodine fifth. Those last two cars were a lap down. Rich Brenner is down in Victory Lane with the winner of today's race, Dale Earnhardt. Let's go down to Victory Lane now, and here's Rich. We're in victory lane with Dale Earnhardt, and Dale, I know they're going to say you made it look easy out there, but driving a 3,350-pound race car on a day like this is not easy work. Well, it's not. Uh, you know, uh, all my guys did a super job with the car. Uh, good wrench sponsorship, Wrangler, and uh, Fisher engines in California. Everybody just did a real good job all week with the car. We sat on the pole and won the race. And you know, it's just a great day for us. Well, there were two classes of race cars out there, Dale Earnhardt's and everybody else's. This car was set up perfectly, it looked like, from the very beginning. Well, we uh, made some changes yesterday afternoon. We weren't too good, but we made some changes after the last practice. Jake Elder set the car up for us, and uh, he helped us an awful lot, and it, a lot of the credit goes to Jake Elder, and so it is just a good job for everybody in, in, involved today. Everybody's talking about the difference between V6s and V8 engines. You were running the V6. You're an old V8 man. Uh, I think you like this V6, and uh, everybody's saying today the V6 was without question the superior car. Well, I knew once we got the car worked out, you know, we were a little bit off uh, in May here, and Tim was beating us, and uh, he won the race with the V8, but we got this car worked around and adjusted up, and, uh, you know, it proves the V6 is the thing to do. Well, there's an old saying in racing that when you have such a big lead and you're going into those last few laps, you start hearing all these strange noises in the race car. Were you hearing anything out there today? Hearing and feeling. You know, I was looking and watching everybody I was catching, and, uh, you know, that's a bad time of the race for me, really. I just soon get it over with quick. Well, a typical Dale Earnhardt race, too. You never let up. Well, you know, that's the way we want to run this. When it handled good, it was running this, you know, good at its pace. And uh, every time I tried to slow down and pace myself, I wouldn't make a good line. So I just kept running my comfortable pace, and that was fast pace. Dale, congratulations on an excellent race. Your winner in victory lane, Dale Earnhardt. Well, Dale Earnhardt has a lot to smile about. I've been to a lot of races. And I don't think I have seen one where one guy has been as dominant as Earnhardt was here today. Well, Glenn Jarrett has made his way over to the garage area now and is with our second place finisher. We're standing by with Darrell Waltrip. Darrell, tough run, but there just wasn't no catching at number eight today. No, I guess we won our class, you'd say. Uh, not trying to make any excuses. That's a fast car. We saw that the last couple of times we run against it. So uh, we're going to get us a V6. Well, do you think that was the difference in the cars today, the fact that he had the V6 and 100 pounds less? Well, the V6, 100 pounds, and a half inch more rear spoiler, all those things complement a day like today. Well, you made adjustments on your car all day long. Did you get it to your liking? It's close. Yeah, shorter run that wide open. That's about all I other we could have done. Well, there's not much more he can do other than...